Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We are back with another episode of Daily Pound here, Monday morning. Hope everyone's doing well and you had a good weekend. Today's episode is going to be focused on one thing and one thing only, which might end up being Palantir's most monumental product since they announced AIP. I know there's a lot of other news to talk about. We got one of the uh, congressmen who has left Congress to join Palantir. I know that's big news. We'll talk about that tomorrow. There's a couple other things I want to talk about. This episode in particular is going to be about AIP Now. You might have heard of it. You might have not heard of it. AIP Now, Palantir's latest product. Originally, I didn't think it was a product. Seems like it's going to be a pretty big product. So we got a lot to talk about, a lot to dissect. Let's get into it. So first of all, before we get into the Palantir product that came out on Friday, and I'm sure we're going to get an update on it a little bit later this week or next week from Palantir themselves in terms of what this product is, why it's important, and why we should be thinking about it in a pretty unique way as investors. What has been the main issue with Palantir software? And Alice Karp himself has said it. Their product is thick. It's not thin. And what that means is a Fortune 500, Fortune 50, Fortune 100 company could buy it and probably pay Palantir $20, $30 million a year, get a lot of value from it, and be a sticky customer for five, six years, maybe a decade working with Palantir. Some of these customers they've kept for almost a decade now with BP. The problem is that only scales so far. You can't just have one product that you're trying to sell to the biggest companies in the world, which you can get all of the biggest companies in the world, but at the end of the day, you have to scale. Companies like Microsoft that work in the enterprise space, even though they have consumer products, have pretty much every single small business on the planet in some way or another using Microsoft. Either you're using Microsoft Word and Excel, and that's a small way that you may be a restaurant just like tabulating your data on uh, Excel, therefore you pay for Microsoft, or you're a big, big company and you use Microsoft Teams and you have a very big enterprise deal because you have 100,000 employees that need to be able to video chat with each other and you have Microsoft Teams. In order to scale a software company to the levels that we're thinking, two, three, four, five hundred billion from the $50 billion range that Palantir is at, you've got to be able to target SMBs, small businesses, or even medium-sized businesses that are not the biggest Fortune 500 companies in the world. Oracle, Salesforce, Microsoft, all of these guys go after every single business in the world, not just the biggest enterprises. Now, why am I bringing that up? Well, one of the things that Palantir has been trying to do over the past year, and they've been very explicit about this in a variety of different product updates, announcements, and how they've talked about it on earnings calls, is to modularize a thick product. What does modularize mean? It means, hey, you've got a lot that you could buy if you buy AIP or Foundry. And in order to get the full value of ARP or Foundry, well, you've got to spend some big bucks. Not every business has the big bucks. I mean, it's not every company has, you know, $10, $15 million to throw at you at once. And by the way, not every company wants to even put up $10, $15 million before they see the results of the software. And so if they don't want to get hooked up on a pilot and then go through all these sales and negotiations, if they could just download a product and use it and kind of sign up and put in their credit card information, just like you or I would be doing if we were gonna sign up for any type of subscription product, and we could delete the subscription if we aren't happy with it, or we could keep paying for it and even pay more as we use it if we like what we're getting, well then maybe that's a way to scale the bootcamp model that Palantir has been initiating across the entire world, now they've done over 850 bootcamps in the past year, in a way that is hyperscaling small business growth. And that's what it looks like AIP Now, Palantir's latest product is. AIP Now, aip.palantir.com. You can go to it right now and check it out yourself. Um, it's pretty interesting. Now, when I saw this product, initially I was like, oh, it's a hub that is centralized for Palantir's uh, different use cases of AIP. So for example, if I click on automotive or construction, real estate or energy, financial services, media, healthcare, these are all sort of the main industries that Palantir works in. There's a bunch of videos. There are some of these slideshows. It gives you an overview of how you can use it. It tells you how you can implement it. Uh, there's, you know, some really good diagrams and it's a pretty good sort of marketing vehicle for Palantir to be able to get someone who wants to automate their accounts payable by showing them what a preview of it looks like. And then maybe that person can call them up and get a conversation with a sales rep, maybe get a boot camp, a mini boot camp, uh, and then potentially, you know, procure Palantir software. At the end of the day, the whole goal of this is to get uh, value from the software. And if this thing helps them get it, then that's good to go. That's not what this is. What this seems to be is a product in and of itself. So here's Sham Sankar. He tweeted this a couple of days ago. Accelerate your enterprise with AIP now. Battled hardened solutions, workflows, apps, and beyond across industries and functions one click away. Okay, so 
Now, when I see Sham saying this, I don't think that's just marketing. I don't think that's just like a centralized hub where there's a bunch of videos that you can look at for how to use AIP terminals. I think that's something deeper. So over the weekend, I start looking at how Palantir employees are thinking about this product. A lot of them on Twitter, a good friend of the channel, Chad is on Twitter. I'll leave his Twitter in the description. And um, the way they're talking about it is not like it's marketing. So here's a tweet by Chad, uh, Palantir Vision asked him, hey, is this product like a thing or it's just marketing? Chad says, this is all product. We are not great at marketing, more to come soon, but this has been a long time effort of both infrastructure and solution specific products, buckle up. What that means, and after talking with Coach Rap on the Pounder Weekly Podcast, who was there on Friday in the chat, basically kind of guiding us of how we should think about this, is that this is a big deal. And the reason this is a big deal, and it might not seem like a big deal yet, and, you know, Pounder, I think, has to do some press releases and stuff like that when they, like, really, really officially announce it. This is what Coach Rap has argued is SaaS 2.0. This is what he also said, and I, I agree with him now that I've got time to think about it, and I'll explain my logic here in a second is what iOS for the enterprise could look like. What is iOS? It's an app store, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Gmail. I download them from the iOS store or from the Google Play store, and I'm able to use those applications on top of iOS. What has Palantir always been? It's been a platform people build on top of. Foundry is an ontology of your data. So all that data in one place allows you to build applications on top of that data, specific workflows, specific terminals that allow you to get business value and intelligence from your organization. Palantir just has all the sophisticated proprietary te technology that is a foundry, that is an ontology, that is an AIP that actually allows you to derive that value from the applications you build on top of the main layer. Well, if foundry AIP is the core layer that allows you to build on top of it, what if Palantir could modularize the things that you're building on top of it, like accounts payable automation, like the examples we saw in life sciences, real estate, construction, media, etc. And you could theoretically, if you already have Foundry or some version of Foundry in your enterprise, download those AIP terminals and then use them on top of Foundry. I don't know if this is exactly how it's going to work. I don't know what all the specific details look like. But Codestrap is very excited for this because he believes that if Palantir, which they haven't done it yet, has a sign up button on this website and has a enter your credit card details <laughs> and then allows you to download accounts payable automation and then you're using it and you're actually building on top of your own data. What's the whole point of the boot camps? The whole point of the boot camps is that Palantir FDEs, for deployed engineers, will take your data, put it into an AIP terminal, show you what it looks like, then you get to sit with it for a couple of days, and then potentially talk to your you know, bosses if they want to procure that software. What if you could just do that tomorrow? What if you're a restaurant doing $5 million in revenue, a company Palantir would likely never work with historically, and you need to get your accounts payable under, un, under check, right? You need to actually make it more efficient, more effective, streamline it, all that stuff. What if you download uh, accounts payable automations from AIP now? I don't know if you need Foundry pre, in a pre-existing way, or maybe you can do it without Foundry. That stuff's a little bit unclear, but let's just assume you had the software that was needed. You download this version of it. You use it for like 30 day free trial, whatever it may, may be like. And then after you start using it, you're like, you know what? I want to keep this thing. And it charges you $10,000 a month, which if you're doing, you know, 5 million in revenue, maybe 10,000 a month is not crazy, especially if it helps you streamline your processes. And Palantir now gets to collect $10,000 a month, just like a Microsoft collects, you know, $10,000 a month from a small business or a Salesforce or a Snowflake. You can get started with the Snowflake uh, Lake House for like 20 bucks a month. Amazon, AWS, so many startups, you know, get started for like 40, 50 bucks a month. They're paying to AWS just to store some of their data. This is how tech companies, in my opinion, massively scale. They don't just go after the BPs and the Airbuses of the world. They go after everybody. And if your products are that good and your distribution is that stellar, then anyone and everybody in the world should have access to your products. That's the nature of tech. It has a fixed cost and then infinite scale, theoretically, which should allow you to then be able to grow top line revenue in a profound way. If this is iOS for the enterprise, if this is SaaS 2.0, if this is value immediately provided, the whole concept of now, if you get AIP and versions of AIP uh, that you can start building upon now, whether you need Foundry or you don't need Foundry, it seems like there's going to be a lot of value 
to all these small businesses that want to be able to use Palantir in a sophisticated way. Alex Karp, in the Bloomberg interview two weeks ago before AAPCon, he was asked by um, the host, well, when are you going to go after consumers? When are you going to build something that's worth it for consumers? And Karp kind of danced around the question. And he, you know, he said, we're working on a lot of different things that are really interesting and exciting. In my opinion, I interpreted that as we're building something that's going to be more mainstream. But in, uh, again, in my opinion, I didn't think he was going after consumers. I don't think Carp wants to be competing with Meta and Google and these guys for like our attention, like individual human beings. I think he wants to go after the B2B enterprise companies and really go after B2B, which are all the small businesses. So when that interviewer asked him, hey, you know, when am, when am I going to have a version of AIP on my phone so I can track my health data and my, my schedules, my meetings, all that stuff? I think Carp and Palantir know that that's not the game they want to play in. I mean, iOS 18, Apple's new software that comes out in a, in a couple months, that's probably going to be like your virtual assistant, right? Because they already have the distribution. It's on your phone. They have Siri. They're going to be working with Google to integrate Gemini. Like, I don't think they're going after consumers. And I historically, if you just watch the videos on the channel, I never felt Palantir cared about the consumer market because that's just a whole different version of going to market. I think they cared about how do we get the biggest customers in the world to use our stuff? And then once we figure that out, which... Again, this is not me saying it. Carp basically laid out this framework a couple years ago. Um, how do we then take what's worked for them and bring it to small businesses? Just like they take what's working at the government, like mixed reality, and then bring it to the commercial, like Panasonic, that's now using their IC2 mixed reality uh, headset software. So to me, when Carp in that Bloomberg interview said, we're working on a lot of interesting and exciting things, and he didn't brush off the idea of working for consumers, like he never said, hey, we're not going to build anything for consumers. I think his fundamental debate in his head was like, should we go after consumers or small businesses? And I'm pretty sure Palantir decided, hey, let's go after small businesses. So if AIP now is iOS for the enterprise and millions of small businesses around the world will have access to AIP in the touch of a button where they can sign up with their credit card immediately, this shit is going to scale. Now, what does that look like? When does that happen? Is Palantir actually planning to allow you to sign up with a credit card and then you can download it immediately and then start working? I don't have the answers to these questions yet. But from what I'm gathering, which is the goal of an investor to do due diligence and gather and see, they will likely be sandbagging guidance if they can grow top line revenue. And the reason they're going to grow top line revenue is because customer count is going to grow. If customer count is going to grow, top line revenue is going to grow. Why would customer count grow? Not only because I think Pounder is crushing it with boot camps, but because AIP now might be the ace up their sleeve. Pounder has to really be able to get, forget domestic distribution, international distribution across the entire world. And that would enable them to have tons and tons of customers that maybe aren't paying millions of dollars. But even if they're paying thousands of dollars a month, a customer is a customer. And eventually you can upsell them on other products because Foundry and AIP are built on network effects. More people building more workflows. All of it kind of gets added to the marketplace, almost like an AWS marketplace that Amazon has where they're selling B2B. And that becomes something that a lot of people can use in a really interesting way. That would lead, theoretically, right? to the stock reacting if the top line revenue growth and the customer count beats the guidance that Palantir has set and the guidance that analysts have set on the street. And then you just power on the AI narrative. These applications are not just, you know, basic applications for the enterprise and basic software workflows, but they're AI enabled in a way that's real because of AIP. I think we've got something special on our hands. So I don't know what this fully looks like. And maybe my speculations are not fully correct. But from what I'm gathering, it feels like this is iOS for the enterprise. It feels like this is SaaS 2.0. It feels like this can become a product that is incredibly, not only useful, but scalable, which is what Palantir has not had, right? They've not had a product that is massively scalable. Now, they scaled boot camps pretty well, but at the end of the day, there is a bottleneck there, which is the talent needed to conduct the boot camps. If this can replace the boot camps to an extent, I think customer count is going to go higher. And if customer count goes higher, top line revenue growth will go higher as well. So this is really exciting stuff. Palantir AIP now it is here let's see what happens I'm waiting for an official announcement from the company we don't have an announcement yet we just have the product that's launched but it's not really launched just because you know the employees tweeted about it but I don't think there's like an actual understanding of what this product is and we'll see over the coming weeks maybe this is something going into Q1 earnings that they're going to try to make a big deal and uh, we'll see how you know Wall Street reacts to it as well if this actually does become or attempts to become what is iOS before the enterprise Super exciting stuff. Thank you, everybody, for being here. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode of Daily Pound here. I'll see you guys on the next one.